again, guys, I cannot guarantee that I am going to keep making content for this game. But for now, I'm freaking enjoying it. So like, let's enjoy this together. Hi, welcome back to another Connor Farm video. My name is Lace. And today we're going to be talking about like efficiently farming for your upgrades, especially because like from what I can see, there are like two massive pathways that we can actually take. So for example, I picked up a whole bunch of like really sick units and like I really would want to focus on it. However, if I go down this path, then I probably will not be able to actually clear out like extreme two of the event boss because like similar to a lot of the other games that do have the elements generally speaking you're going to want to end up with mono teams for every single element and so seeing as the ogre orc guy is like a green wind element we generally want the fire team to be able to deal with that not only do we deal 1.5 times damage from our fire attribute but we also are actually taking less damage when he attacks us however what is really weird about it is that this event actually ends really really fast so i think it actually in five days like seriously i don't know how much we can actually realistically farm in five days and so what i want to do today is kind of like lay out the two different choices that we can make and honestly i'm still not like made that choice yet because there are pros and cons to both and it's actually a really weird situation that they've put us in right like apparently that this event is not even actually supposed to be out yet it was a little bit unexpected but this is the hand that we've been dealt and so let's just deal with it okay however the one thing that is consistent and the thing that i do want to focus on in this video is like the equipment farming because from like an equipment farming point of view it's not really like pre-con it's more like well for me personal experience more like dragalia lost where you're going to be dumping an extraordinary amount of stamina to like smith up some items so like these bad boys over here you guys can already see like how much these guys cost anyway before that let's talk about the roots first so um let's go into my party Okay, so generally speaking, you're probably going to have to re-rolled like a really sick party or like you've re-rolled like uh, your favorite waifu, stuff like that, right? However, again, to clear the boss, you're going to need a team more like this. And honestly speaking, this is not really the optimal team. We really want as much fire as we can, especially like from the survivability aspect, because that ogre hurts, my dudes. And so that's kind of the first choice we need to make. So are you happy to fight ogre like sub-optimally? So you probably won't be able to clear EX2, for example. Maybe with all of your upgrades, you'll be able to get to like ultimate two or something or maybe ex1 but the conversion ratio from like your tickets to the rewards is a little bit gimped slightly gimped and so if that's kind of what you want then you could focus on like your main team like your main reroll team on the other hand if you want to maximize the efficiency from the event and so you got five days left to do that what you're going to want to do is like put together as many fire units as you can and then grind out for like those green earrings and then upgrade those weapons stuff like that right so yeah that's really the choice that you can make you can either grind out the fire team or like focus on your main team i I don't know. I, I'm still not sure what I want to do. I think I'm going to do a mix of both. So for example, uh, instead of using this CLO, I'm going to use the green one that I pulled before. So this one over here. However, like obviously she doesn't have the elemental advantage. I think I'm going to do something like this, especially because like Cecily gets like all of those juices from the uh, the skill books and stuff we get from the shop. And so what this means is that I don't get to work on my Leah. I don't get to work on my Chris, stuff like that, right? And so from here, I want to talk about like the priorities in terms of upgrades and then efficiently farming for your equipment. So in terms of priority, it is super straightforward, right? So like you want to, again, match all of these guys with your elements or your subs. Honestly, this is trash. I just use like the select thing and like this really should be like another dark damage one or like a physical damage one. And so in this case, like I have a Melissa. However, this is a poison resist boost. So that's not really that great. But the advantage of juicing up this Melissa is that I do get an extra 10% stat. So it in total gives me 40% stats from this character over here. Get all of your subs sorted out and then the subs go to 60 first. If not 60, then get them to 50 because like we are going to be really constrained by those freaking rainbow cups i think 50 for all of the subs is very very realistic and that is probably the first thing that we should do to get like the maximum amount of power gain and all of that is really straightforward right because you're just grinding for each of their promotions so for example um let's look at chris so yeah just again like this is so straightforward you're just grinding for these guys however let's start talking about equipment and so to assist me with explaining like what we should do for equipment so i'm gonna like go over to a spreadsheet and you guys already know how much i love my spreadsheets you know and so guys welcome to the spreadsheet by um this cube guy and so essentially what this cube guy has done like so for reference his name is luna he's put together a whole bunch of these normal drops and these hard mode drops actually and so like this is really freaking good because like in this one over here it's actually showing you the most efficient stage and so i do want to walk through a couple of these so like these ones down here they're not overly useful but like um it's nice to have because it you can actually like do some lookups and stuff however if i come back up here 
you're going to see that there are two columns called chapters over here. And so what we want to do is essentially farm this corresponding chapter to be like the most efficient in achieving like the farm or like the creation of a weapon or an accessory. Now accessories are going to be a little bit different, but let's talk about weapons first. So for me personally, I picked up the assassin dagger recipe from the arena shop. After that, I had a look at the recipe and I noticed that it required iron ore and dragon claws. And so from this spreadsheet, what this is saying is that the most efficient chapter to farm the iron ore and the dragon claws is 419. And so off I went, I went to 419 and I farmed it. I, I just farmed like the iron ore and the dragon claws. And so this stage just made it really, really easy to farm up the materials required to make that assassin dagger. And so it's kind of like a similar idea for all of the other ones. So like if, for example, if you are trying to make like a fire staff for your Megumin, you're going to want to farm 5-8. However, I am going to go into game and show you guys what that looks like. And just remember that we do need iron ore and wiven wing. Okay, guys, we're back in the games. As you can see, we have a fire staff over here. And so what we have is this recipe over here. And you can see that where we can farm for the fire staff is at 5-8. And so if I come over here and click the next one, the wiven bone, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to see that it is actually not here. The 5-8 is not present for the wiven bone. However, moving back one more, I'm going to look at this... Uh, I'm not going to even try this. Yeah, I'm going to try this branch. And then so I'm going to scroll down and you're going to see that it is not farmable via 5.8 either. And so why that is, is because there was actually just a mistake on the spreadsheet. Okay, so the most efficient chapter for this guy is supposed to be, uh, I think it was about 6.10. And so as you can see, 6.10 drops the branch. And then if we go over to the bone, the wiven bone, I can show you guys that 6.10 also drops the wiven bone. And so I think I need to go have a chat with the guy. But essentially what I'm trying to say is that generally speaking, what you're going to find is that you're going to like be able to farm two of the three mats like two of these three and then for the last one you're gonna have to farm something else so for like for example this one over here we got 5 10 and 7 7 so like 5 10 is gonna give us wait a second why is it taking me there <laughs> this is gonna give us the gold ore as well as this mermaid tier and so what i'm trying to say is that for the third one for the one that's the odd one out what you're gonna want to do is try to pick a stage like that drops that as well as something you need next so again just looking at this we can farm this at 5 8 5 10 and 7 7 and so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go back to the spreadsheet and have a look at 5, 8, 5, 10, and 7, 7. So 5, 8, 5, 10, and 7, 7. And so what we have here is a whole bunch of drops that we can actually kind of like selectively farm, right? And so for example, if you know that you are going to be farming for earrings in which you need gold ore, then you can farm the 5, 10 because it's going to drop you the fire staff recipe as well as the gold ore. Otherwise, on the other hand, you could be looking at the mermaid tier or the wiven wing or like the iron ore or the dragon claws just to see like, you know, if you do need any of that, like it's going to be over here. And so what that means is that every single time you farm a stage, you should be farming for at least two things. You're either going to be able to farm two materials for one weapon, or generally speaking, especially because we're at the start of our farming journey, you're going to be able to farm like one material for one weapon and then another material from another weapon from the same stage. And where I said weapon, this can apply to accessories as well. And so I think that's a great segue into accessories because it's a little bit different, but the concept is generally the same. And so what we have here, guys, is the accessories table. So this boy over here, all elements earrings require these two drops and so this is as clear as it gets like no matter which one of these earrings you're making they're always going to use gold ore and sea dragon scales and so to get the gold ore and the sea dragon scales which makes up two of the three materials of like your earrings you guys and me actually we're going to be farming a lot of 519 now on the other hand we also need these recipes over here so the five earrings these recipes are going to drop from five six and so this is kind of like that whole like you're farming one but you're getting the other one as well so like one for the fire earrings you're getting the recipe itself. And then on the other hand, you have the branch as well as the wiven bone, right? And so like, if you guys remember, wiven bone is actually going to contribute to our fire staff down here. So remember that this is actually not wiven wing. It's supposed to be wiven bone. And so what that means is that if we are farming this one over here, we're actually kind of double farming, right? We're getting the fire earrings recipe. And on top of that, you're also getting the wiven bone for your fire staff. However, this one is a little bit flexible, right? So for example, I am farming for cyclone earrings because I want that resist against wind for like this wind boss that we're doing right now for the event and so what's going to happen here is that i'm going to look at it i'm going to see cyclone earrings i want to see that i'm getting gold ore from it which is one of the required materials for the elemental earrings and so what that means is that when i finish farming for the gold ore and the cyclone earrings from 6-2 what i now need is wiven bone and so what i could do is i could actually farm for the fire staff next or really any of these other ones that require wiven bone and then i can actually get the wiven bone as well as the recipes for example and so guys like i'm running through all of these different examples but there is like 
like something that is remaining constant. And I hope that that is like the thing that sticks with you. And it's that every time you are farming, you are going to be farming for at least two of the mats in one of the stages. And so yeah, guys, I think that summarizes the aspect of the equipment farming for this video. I'm going to be honest, guys, I did not expect like maybe like 60 to 70% of my stamina going into equipment farming. But the good thing about equipment farming is that once you get it done, like you're done, right? So for example, if you make a full set of cyclone earrings, so I'm talking five cyclone earrings, one for each party member, then you can use that for any wind content that actually comes out afterwards. And so then that kind of begs the question, well, like, should I farm for the cyclone earrings or should I farm for like which ones, right? When it comes to these earrings, I do think that farming for the five cyclone earrings is kind of worth it. And if not the five cyclone earrings, then maybe like the T2 ones, right? And by T2, I mean these guys over here. And honestly, they are significantly easier to farm. However, do remember that these earrings, they do get like superseded eventually by these bad boys over here. But on the other hand, they are going to cost a lot more stamina to be able to farm up. And honestly, the same can be said for like these rainbow guys over here. Yes, they are giving you a substantial amount of like defense and like defensive stats, but it's going to take you ages to be able to like farm these bad boys over here. But yeah, generally speaking, I think like these are the best bang for your buck. They give you like quite a lot of resistance. You get 6% resistance to the element itself, as well as like these guys over here for a decent amount of farm. Like it's not a great amount of farm. Like it's, it's a lot. I'm saying it's not like a very little, but again, if you do do five, like these will last you a very, very long time. And so the last thing I want to leave you guys with is like, you're going to notice that we have these gold mats over here and these silver mats over here. The first thing that I do want to say is that they do not overlap. And so like, you can see the mats over here are only using silver mats. Whereas if I come up down here, it's going to be using gold mats. And so what that means is that you should not be afraid of like building this guy out. So for example, I really should be hitting craft and hopefully like use these for like the, the event boss. And then who knows, I might actually go on to craft like maybe one of these and then like another two of these just because I can't be stuff like dumping stamina into it. And so the most important reason as to why I brought this up is that if you're going to be farming for the silver ones, just know that you're going to be also farming for like the silver grade weapons, right? So like these guys over here. Again, in my opinion, I believe it's best to farm for the gold grade weapons as well as the gold grade earrings. Although I completely get why people would just be going for the silver, especially like for these guys over here. I personally think that this win boss event, that ogre guy, it just wasn't really well thought out because all of your launch players are going to be like, well, should I like farm? for the long term or should I farm to be like a little bit less optimal? Depending on how you look at it, it could be like a lot less optimal, right? And so yeah, guys, like hopefully that was a pretty comprehensive look at all of the equipments and kind of like the farming and the optimal farming efficiencies and stuff like that. And so hopefully that helped you, but like I don't think there's too much left to be said. And so let's start wrapping this video up. I got a secret message for you guys and that is Cyclone. Cyclone, because I'm still looking at these, still wondering, mm, is it worth it? That's a lot of mats, man. That is a lot of mats. And so if you guys could drop that secret message down in the comments, comments below I would really appreciate it because it means you watched up until the end of the video and so thank you so much but otherwise please consider a like a sub a comment a follow you guys already know what it is and as a pair of earrings once said to me all good things must come to an end and so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video bye bye